So I am blessed to be with Christian International and trained as a prophet and all the things we do there. I was with Home Base in Santa Rosa Beach for 30-some years, and uh, then God relocated us temporarily to Delaware. <laughs> I said, what did I do wrong? I <laughs> but but th there is a good thing about Delaware. They don't have taxes, right? <laughs> so if, if something's $10, it's $10. <laughs> no tax. So um, anyways, the subject of fear. And we're not talking about an emotion of fear. We're talking about the spirit of fear tonight, all right? So whenever my husband and I oversee the deliverance for uh, Dr. Bill Hammond's network, we actually birthed it and pioneered it 20-some years ago. Uh, we launched the Ministry of Deliverance on Halloween night in 1999. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, that was Apostle Tom Hammond picked that date. And we trained uh, teams up and have trained teams all over the world. But, you know, I love doing deliverance. I love seeing the captives set free. But I more love, is that a good, is that, is that okay. <laughs> it's a little bit of Southern come out now and then, Okay. <laughs> David was saying, where are you from? I said, well, I can sound Canadian, eh? Or I can sound real Southern because I was born in West Virginia. All right. Anyway, but um, I love training others and equipping others to set the captives free. Mark 16, 17 says, these signs shall follow those who believe. But you can go into most even apostolic prophetic churches and they aren't setting anybody free. Right, right. Amen. And um, we asked a, a Church of God pastor one time, we said, what do you do with Mark 16, 17? He goes, uh, we pretty much ignore that scripture. Yeah. And yet we see people in the church dying before their time, leaving the church, you know, falling into addictions or, and all those things. But anyway, you know, some uh, charismatic teach, that they will teach, even in their uh, Bible school, that a Christian can have a demon. Have you heard that? Yeah. So the scripture I stand on is 1 Thessalonians 5.23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole what spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are body, soul, and spirit. So the enemy cannot, you know, the devil, the demonic cannot be in our spirit. That's where the spirit of God lives. And I know... That pastor, uh, they've been doing a great teaching, uh, Pastor Tricia, I think every Tuesday for the past couple of weeks. So she's covered a lot of this. Actually, I try not to listen. I told her I'm going to watch them all after because <laughs> cause I'd be like, oh, I can't show that. Oh, I can't show that. And I turned it on and you were talking about perfect love cast off it. I went, oh, can't listen to that because that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> Amen. So anyways, um, in our, so spirit of God, you know, we know that he's in our spirit, man. But in our mind, uh, the soulish areas, our minds, our will, and emotions, and that's where most of us are attacked, all right? And even in our body, I remember one time in Dublin, Ireland, and uh, this man, you know, you know, so if I'm sick of my body, um, I have a demon. I said, yes, sir, it's called infirmity. Amen? So it's not a fruit of the spirit, so therefore... Amen? So these are the areas that we need to be set free in. There should not be anybody in the church still being bound up and tormented by the devil. And I will share a few of my testimonies. So I was trained really good <laughs> by the Lord. I, you know, trained by the devil before Christ, right? But trained by the Lord to never give up. And it's about being tenacious. And no matter what, okay, it doesn't mean I haven't had times of crying, times of, of saying, I, I don't want to do this anymore. Then I repent. And I said, oh, yes, I do. Amen? Because there is nothing like the taste of freedom that we experience, but even more if you can set other people free. See, I think one of the greatest attacks on the church, you know, sometimes the devil doesn't even care if you get saved. But he does not want you to fulfill your destiny and your purpose and be all that God has called you to be. Amen? 
So I always say this, you know, this is all just deliverance 101. You know, the first Thessalonians, yes, body, soul, and spirit, not in our spirit, man. And also, if you're born again, how many here are born again? Okay, so your eternal life has changed. You're now going to heaven. But when you get delivered, your quality of life changes. And we're coming up on Easter. And when Jesus hung on that cross, it wasn't just for salvation. It was for your miracle. Amen. It was for your freedom. Amen. And he paid a high price for it. And I am going to get everything he purchased for me. Amen. It's all about covenant. Amen. And what the Lord has done for us. I refuse I spent too many years being a victim, being abused, had all kinds of diseases, had cancer twice, all this rubbish, and was living below the level of a, just a non-believer. <laughs> Amen? And when I got a revelation of God's love and understood that I was not the redhead stepchild, <laughs> truth, <laughs> that God paid the price for me. Amen? So I'm getting ahead of myself. I want to read that scripture. Okay, in let's go to, actually, I'm going to jump back to this first. Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is near to the heart broken, and he saved those who are crushed in spirit. Amen? Contrite in heart, truly sorry for their sin. The Lord is, he rescues all who are discouraged and have given up hope. I have a family member that deals with depression. And it says hope deferred makes the heart sick. And there's a lot of people walking around as Christians. You know, the world looks at us and says, you know, different than me. Well, I want to be different. I want the glory of the Lord just to come through. I want the joy that people are drawn to me because of the, God has given me a supernatural gift of joy. I'm like a weeble wobbles. You know, the weebles wobble. Remember those toys? They don't fall down though. I might wobble, honey, but I'm going to stand back up. Amen. And I am going to take a lot of people to freedom. That's why, you know, I always watch what I say because I don't want to sound like, oh, I'm this big minister and I go everywhere. But God sends me everywhere because he knows what he put in me. And he put in me that I could go into the devil's territory. Oh, I don't know if you want to mess with the devil. Come on. Come on. I fought death so much in my life and over my family that it's like, what else you got? Amen. I have fought the spirit of death like this. Amen. Where it tried to, I mean, I even had a heart palpitation. It was so close so many times. But I say in the name of Jesus. Because if I know anything, I tell you what I do know. My God is always going to be faithful. No matter what it looks like. I think uh, Pastor spoke about generational curses. Maybe, maybe it was earlier, but I'm telling you this. Generational curses are stubborn. But we have to continue to contend for our breakthrough. And say, I understand about whatever our ancestors may have done, but we broke that off and we will continue to contend for the, our faith, for our freedom, for our healing, for our family's salvation. You know, recently that song, The Blessing, I love The Blessing. I love worship. I love worship. I used to be on the dance team for eight years at CI at the beginning, and I danced, 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 right? And just love to worship God. So the, the song, The Blessing, I always usually cry when I hear it. How many of you know the song, The Blessing by Carrie Joby? Anyway, but it was recently, probably the last two months or something, and I had it on, and all of a sudden, you know, the Lord said, you know, you're waiting for some day for your children to line up, right? And he goes, but I have covenant with you. So they are going to line up. Some day is here. And I went, hallelujah. Amen. So that has encouraged me so much. 
you know, he spoke to me and, and, you know, we've been doing some walking, you know, in the area where we live in Delaware and there's a lot of eagles. I don't know. I did see an eagle when we crossed over to New Jersey too, but uh, never seen so many eagles in my life as I have in Delaware. It's like the eagles are flying. And one day I was walking, my husband and I, and this eagle, I was trying to video it, you know, but it's hard to because they're flying everywhere. Anyway, but I was watching this eagle, eagle and it was really um, you know, the, the wind just kept blowing. It was like, it just kept, I have to come back and the wind would blow it. And the Lord said, don't fight against the wind of my spirit. When they were talking about, uh, you know, I see you as one. So, you know, I think it's like, we can let the enemy, you know, come at us and bring the doubt and unbelief and all the things, the natural facts, right? But we're supernatural people. Hello. Yeah. So you don't like your, the facts? Shift them. Begin to prophesy to it. Right. Amen. And see it get out of your way. Yeah. Amen. And as I said, I, there might be times where I cry a little bit. Well, I cry a lot, actually. <laughs> you know, in those seasons of times of when, the, you know, the attack comes at my children. But the Lord says so many times, it's like you're fighting the wind. But see, it's the wind of the Spirit. When God takes you, it's just like, lately I've been say, saying, God, I want to get to that place again. You know, I love to drink with the best of them, if you know what I mean. And I haven't for a while, you know. It just seems like, you know, you're always doing what you have to do and you're whatever. But there's a, an anointing that comes that refreshes, right? I know you all looking like, what kind of drinking is she talking about? I'm talking about <laughs> letting that refreshing come. Now, how many know that 2020 was a little bit of a rough year? Amen? <laughs> Some things we walked through. That book I wrote um, of Make Your Faith Bigger Than Your Fear, God told me, I was sharing with the pastors tonight at supper, that the Lord had told me to write a book on fear. And uh, believe it or not, I do not like to write. <laughs> So it was like one of those things I was telling me. It's like going to the dentist. Oh, no, I've got to go get the dentist. I know it'll be good, but I don't like to go to the dentist. It's the same with the book. And so ended up, I started the book on the end of October, the first week in November, because I ended up with COVID, the gift that keeps on giving. And uh, so as I was laying in bed, I saw a photo that I had in the guest bedroom that says, make your faith bigger than fears. And that was the name of it. You know, God said, that's it. And so I began to write and it kind of held up because I had uh, a family situation and then had a family situation with my husband. And I was like, oh, you know, if anything, I was being attacked with, guess what? Fear. <laughs> I don't know if anybody knows Dr. Selwyn Stevens. He put on my Facebook because, you know, he's a friend of ours. Haven't seen him in a few years, but he's still a friend. But he said, I heard when you write something like that, you have to walk through it. I said, I already done that, bought that t-shirt, you know, I've already done that. I said, I already have. I'm not going back there. Amen. But you know what I realized through all this stuff, you know, and, and the book on fear, it doesn't mean that fear does not try to come at me. As Pastor Tricia said, you know, we all need deliverance. You know, we're the directors for deliverance for Christian International, and guess who needs deliverance? Me. <laughs> not Bob. He's so good. He doesn't have anything. <laughs> does anybody believe that? <laughs> but... You know, I refuse to be a casualty. I refuse. I will not let the devil win. I've come too far. But when we're doing deliverance, you know, the reason I gave that scripture uh, about the Lord, you know, to near the heartbroken, it's not just, we always think deliverance is like the demons of fear, that, which that's what we're covering tonight, or addictions and all that. But sometimes we have a broken heart. Amen? We have hope deferred, which made our hearts sick. Disappointment, all those things, right? But I also found out, yes, God's near to us for that, but he wants to bring us out of that, especially, like I said, for me, I would like to say, oh, I never had to deal with fear ever again. Liar, liar, pants on fire, because that's not true. Amen? And that's where I think Christians give up. They think, well, I got delivered once, you know, I don't need any more. Yes, you do. Yeah. 
We live in a contaminated world. There's things that happen to us, especially when you're in ministry, hearts, rejection, disappointments, all those things. But we have to, to seek the Lord. And, you know, there's, deliverance can come different ways. It can come during worship. It can come as you're reading the Word of God. But more often than not, you've got to get the devil cast out. Amen? And there's no shame in that. Amen? All right. So let's do the scripture on fear. 1 John 4, 18 from the King James. There is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out fear because fear hath torment. Right? And that's why no longer a slave to fear. That's such... You know, that used to be one of my anthem songs because of all the assignment of death and destruction that has been over my family. Like I said, the spirit of death has just been in my face. And I remember when we started in deliverance, I don't know what country, we got off the plane and there was a demon right there and said, don't get back on the plane, you know. And I'd be like, I don't want to do this. The first year of deliverance, I wanted to quit. I didn't even want to do deliverance. My husband could tell you, we received three prophetic words, and I'd be like, I'm a prophet of God. I know. <laughs> Who wants to be doing deliverance? I saw that movie, The Exorcist, so I'm not going there. <laughs> you know? Chid, right? <laughs> so anyways, but God knew what he put in us. And he put a, in us a simple way to do deliverance. We move in the word of knowledge like the Lord did, discerning the spirit. We cast it out. You're set free. Impart the opposite. Seal the deal. Thank you, Jesus. When revival breaks out, you don't have days and weeks. Now, I'm not talking about counseling. Um, you know, there's pastoral counseling and, and you know, inner healing. Love. That's fine, but I'm not called to do that. To get ready for a revival, 1,000 people come in that door, you better be able to cast the devil out with the word. And we're not there yet, but we're going to get there. Because the Lord said, right? Did he cast it out with the word? That's what my Bible says. And did he not say, greater things shall you do? Amen. Okay, A.W. Tozer said this, love cast out fear. For when we know we are loved, we're not afraid. Whoever has God's perfect love, fear is gone out of the universe for him. Um, that's what I said, too. I said, I had to read that again. Going out of the universe, that's quite a statement. But it's true. It means it's not near you anymore, right? You're not, it's not this internal thing. You know, fear does have torment. You know, so many people struggling with fears, and there's all kinds of fears. There's, I call it ground level fear, but there's the demonic fear. There's different levels of fear. Fear of, um, you know, your business not making it. Fear of not having finances. You know, to me, that's, yeah. But when you start getting up to fear of death, fear of death of a loved one, and that's been my battle because of the battle I have fought over my family with the spirit of death. When doctors would tell me my middle son died twice in one day in 2017, and when he, had, when he died the second time, they came in and they said, we've been working on him, two doctors, four nurses, for a couple hours. We don't think we can get him back. Okay, fine. She walks out. I call my pastors. They're all praying. I stand outside that ICU room, and I call my son back to life. He, they were expecting their fourth child. I said, Daniel, you might be tired, you know, working two jobs, having kids, you know. You might be tired. And it might be all going is what you're looking at now. But I said, Daniel, I call you back to life. I said, Daniel, come back. And my son lives today. <laughs> Amen. There's different types of warfare, too, against the demonic. So that's. You know, that's what I, for Daniel, it was like the CI way. Stand outside the door and say, no, <laughs> you back off. You will not kill my seed. Amen. Right. Now, I might have cried later. <laughs> Amen. Because I am not, I'm not, I'm still flesh, right? I'm still human. But I stood on the word. Yeah. And I know God would be faithful. Yeah. Right. Amen. Right. And plus... What I've been taught, the 30 years, well, not 30, some years, 33, I guess, with Christian National, we are taught to war and not give up wow. till we see the breakthrough. Wow. Amen? 
All right, so talking about deliverance and things. So what the enemy could come, um, you, it was in one of the songs about taking away the shame. It was about the shame, you know, no longer having shame. And see the scripture on shame. It's, you know, shame makes you want to hide. Amen. Shame, uh, actually, m when I was writing my book and Apostle Jane Hammond did my forward this time, and um, she said, you need to put in there how you call us when you you know, have things, and I do. You know, when I'm out on the road and things are going like my kid's dying and whatever, for real, <laughs> they, you know, the, the, uh, them and uh, Bishop Hammond will pray. But, you know, is there a time when the enemy does comes at me and says, oh, great deliverance minister? I was sharing with them, we opened a healing center in Canada, and I have broken foot. I opened it with a boot on. And do you know what the devil said to me? It was funny, because his mom, uh, her and I flew up. I had been overseas in Europe, and then I came home, and I got her, and we were flying. I went to the hospital, got x-ray, got the boot on, and was flying to Canada. And we flew into Boston Logan, and I went by. It was a mirror. And his mom wasn't handicapped or anything, but she was in her 90s, and she was only not even five foot tall, and she walked real slow. So I got a wheelchair. So I'm pushing her with a wheelchair with my boot on, right? And I stopped, and I go, oh, I, this could be a poster card for our healing center. Because the devil had bombarded me the whole trip from, I think, Atlanta to Boston saying, oh, you know, look at you, and your foot's on the hill, and you're open. You can't open that center with that. People just laugh. And you know what I learned in all of this? And I'll tell you the secret. Two words. Everybody go, is it Hebrew? Is it Greek? No. English. Shut up. <laughs> they learned that from me. <laughs> and that's it. You have to learn to tell him to shut up. Because most of the warfare is in our mind. Amen. So with shame, the word shame, here's a synonym of it. Reproach, contempt, discredit, disgrace. And we know shame entered in the Garden of Eden. We won't go a lot on that. But the word of God in Isaiah does say he takes away our shame and gives us double honor. So everything the devil tries to do, God's going to give back more than you ever lost in anything you've went through. He's rather stupid. You know, I think my word of the Lord at Christian National, we get a word of the Lord uh, usually. I didn't this year, but every year. And um, so mine for 2020 was restitution. No, it was restoration and restitution. And there was more about prodigals and all that because God keeps speaking that to me. But the word restore means to put back in original form. But restitution means getting back more than you lost. So how many want back more than you lost? Amen. So some of us need to just write some things down. When we left Canada, we lost a lot financially, um, you know, when we built this center. But you know what? God's a restore and restitution. I don't want it just restored. I want restitution. Amen. And at Christian National, we used to use this word a lot. It was called replevin. And that means getting back something that was illegally taken. How many here have lost something that was illegal? Amen. So it's time to put a demand on that to come back. You know, I have a testimony, but I'm not going to read that one from somebody recently. Um, okay. So praise. We talked about the praise. And it brings us into the throne room. But praise also what? Silence is the enemy, right? Psalms 8, 2. So I'm not going to read that. You can look that up, okay? When my oldest son had a flesh eating disease in 209, he almost died for a month. Uh, he was in the hospital, all kinds of machines and tubes, and, you know, he'd do good for a while, and then they'd say, oh, he's going septic and blah, 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 okay? So like I said, I'm not one that's like, Everything's wonderful, and I have such faith. It was like, in the name of Jesus, I would have to go back to the hotel, and there's where I would cry, and that's where I'd get into the Word, and that's how I learned the word shut up, <laughs> is because the doctors had a very bad prognosis again, and so I went back to the hotel, and I began to put on worship and just praise the Lord, and I had uh, Gloria and Kenneth Copeland's healing CDs put that on, just permeating the atmosphere with faith, got in the word and, I said, and some prophetic words that have been over my son's life. 
And I said, this is the truth. You're a liar. Amen. And then that's when, you know, I had a vision, not a godly vision. It was demonic. I saw my son in a coffin. And the devil was once again just coming on and saying, you know, you heard the doctor, blah, blah, blah. You know, and that's where I learned, shut up. <laughs> you know? And, and that's when I came up on the scriptures. You know how you read scriptures and, you know, you're like, yeah. But when you get a revelation of, that's it. Isaiah 26, 3, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is steadfast because they trust in you. This is a different version. So I almost did the new King James. This is the NIV. And God's always working on me. The antidote to fear is faith, but it's also trust, right? And so God was, you know, you know, telling me, you know, this version, I'm like, that's the one, this is the best one. You're going to keep us in perfect peace because we trust in you. We trust you with everything we have. Amen. And here's what the word trust means. It means reliance on the integrity, strength, ability of a person or thing. And we know that's Jesus. Amen. First Peter one twenty one. it talks about having a confident expectation of something or hope, right? First Peter one twenty one. but I like this, a person, or it says a person or thing because it's uh, the dictionary, has been entrusted, but <laughs> we can give it all to him because he's the one in control. Yeah. Either the word is true or it is not. Either he's faithful or he's not. You know, I always say he doesn't throw you out there and say, wow, <laughs> hope Sharon makes it this time. It's pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. No, he's going before me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he, you know, call on those angels. I remember one of the time I was ministering in Belfast, Ireland at the Sandbrooks, and they had some other guest minister. This was probably 15 years ago at least um, that they had this other guy from Kentucky. I don't even know his name. But we walked in, and we sat on the front row because we were doing ministering together the, at the seminar. And I remember, I don't know why we don't have that prophetic word, but I do remember this. He goes, I don't know who you guys are, but I knew who, know who walked in with you. Two nine-foot angels. So every country I go to, I go, come on, guys, we're going. <laughs> Amen. And I don't have to be afraid. I do use wisdom when I go across the border and different things I do. <laughs> right? So, but anyways, but I know that the angels have charge over me and that God is going to be faithful. And so I remember there was a situation with our, one of our sons in January, 2019, when December we had went to this city where he was and we were at a cafe, have, I was having a cappuccino and, um, so my husband only drinks black coffee cause he's from New Jersey. No. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we're having coffee. And all of a sudden the Lord said, just believe, trust me. And I'd be like, what? Of course I believe. Of course I trust you, you know? And then the very next month, our son was on life support for six days. But as I walked into that ICU room, the Lord said, just believe, trust me. Because in the natural, <laughs> it didn't look so good. <laughs> the prognosis was he would not live. And it was day to day. And you know how I wore that battle? I filled the room with the presence of the Lord through worship. Through worship. So unlike Daniel, where I was like, this was, I worship you, Lord. <laughs> Waymaker. I played that even when you don't see it, he's working. Even when you don't feel it, he's working. Never stops. Never stops working. Because in the natural, I watch the statistics. And, you know, all hooked up and on the life support and all this stuff. And what the doctors would say, that's even when I didn't see it, he was working. Even if I didn't feel it, he was working. But I ward with the praise. Amen. Amen. Trust. Second Samuel twenty-two thirty-one. As for God, his way is perfect. 
The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. I'll read uh, Psalm 71, 5 from the Passion Translation. For you are my only hope, Lord. I've hung on to you, trusting in you all my life. All the scriptures I've read, everything I've said to now, you know, I could go on with the definition of fear because there's like, there's a natural fear when we should be afraid. Like if a, you know, we're I was talking to a minister the other night and him and his daughter got stuck on a train track and they just, I never asked him whether they got out of it or they, you know, walked out or they pushed the car, but they just missed it within, you know, very close, right? So that would be a natural fear, right? But there is a fear that comes through our mind because of past circumstances, what, see, that's what trauma does. That's what, there's two parts of our brain. The hippocampus is where the memories go through. The amygdala is two little almond-shaped things on the top of our brain. And that houses our emotions. So the memory, when you've went through stuff, like the battles I've had with the spirit of death, you know, when the enemy would love to come, he comes and goes, that looks like this. Ooh, I think that's going to happen. And that's when I say, shut up. But sometimes, <laughs> vain imagination, truthfully, I can go from one to a hundred in two seconds. <laughs> but that's why I have to spend the time with the Lord. That's why I have to keep filled up. That's why, I, you know, my thing is praise. I just love to just pray. Might not sing so good, but I can dance. But, <laughs> but I love worshiping the Lord. See, the enemy won't stick around when you're worshiping. And as your mind, you know what I found out? My husband could tell you, I could be anywhere in any place, any nation. And one of my kids, you know, could be dying over here and I'm not in denial. But when I am ministering, I'm totally focused on the Lord. And it's like all this stuff doesn't touch me. Maybe afterwards, it's like, can I stay here all night and preach? Because my mind's going to be on Jesus <laughs> But it's just not be, but that shows me not just behind the podium, but in your bed at night. How many have had the enemy comes just, you're so tired, you're all ready for bed, you get in bed, you lay down, bonk. What about this? You know the car just broke down, and you know your taxes are due the end of the week. What about your sons and daughters? Well, I don't know. I think they're on drugs. <laughs> Anybody else ever had those just as you lay down at night? Torment, tormenting your mind. Like I said, there's a natural fear that's smart. You know, you don't want to run out in traffic and run across the train track when the train's coming. <laughs> those kind of things. But there is a spirit of fear that has been sent uh, to stop us all. And not only does it have torment, it affects our physical body. It begins to, if a person, stress is with fear, right? So what happens with stress, it begins to wear out our immune system. A lot of the diseases, in my book, uh, Breaking the Cycle of Abuse, How Forgiveness is the Key to Freedom, I studied 10 top universities of how when we don't forgive. And they've then spent millions of dollars, Yale, Harvard, all these universities, showing how when we don't forgive, it affects our physical body. But if you carry around fear and stress, it will deplete your immune system. Amen. You begin to have that stress in your neck and, you know, it affects your, your um, bones and all that. Amen. <laughs> but the great news is we don't have to have any of this. Amen. And it's as simple as rebuking it and casting out. Got to cast it out. Amen. Like I said, I'm not saying, you know, doing deliverance. One way is the only way, but more often than not, we have to have it cast out. All right. So um, I'm going to go to Shukarabash. You could thought I'm listening to the Lord. Faith. So 
the opposite of fear is faith. You know, you would think uh, the opposite of fear would be courage, right? But it is faith. And that also is in the song. So I love when God starts laying threads throughout, you know, the songs and the worship and, and what the pastor said. You know, it's like, yep, that's it. So Hebrews eleven six, we all know that scripture. King James says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And Hebrews 4, 2 and 3, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into a rest as he said as i have sworn in my wrath that they shall enter into my rest although the works were finished from the foundations of the world let me say this the word shabbat means rest right and it just doesn't mean laying back in the chair it means to have peace within you see the devil is always trying to drive us but if we don't have the faith if we let fear overtake us and be in us, fear will rob you of your faith and will say, God's not going to come through. And so how can we please God if we're walking around in fear? And I did not put this in my book, although my apostle suggested, or maybe I did, I don't remember now, but fear is a sin. Read it in Revelation. That's all I'm going to say because I don't want to bring any condemnation tonight on that because <laughs> we're going to get rid of fear. All right, but if we don't get healed of fear and don't trust the Lord, we will never, as I said, enter into that Shabbat rest. You know, Shabbat, um, it's mentioned over 200 times in the scripture, right? And it also means to cease from labors. How many here have fasted not because you felt God was calling you to fast, but because you were going through... Now, now, this is a fine line. You can't make God do anything because you fast. You have to believe it's God's will. Amen? But sometimes I found that a fast comes out of fear. Well, I'm going to fast and this will go away. And then when it doesn't work, then you're disappointed in God. Amen? So... We need to, um, I'm going to read, I'm going to go back to the Shabbat. Okay, thank you, Lord. In the New Testament is the word pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S. And it always refers to faith, assurance, belief, and faithfulness. So the Lord has called us to walk in peace and faith and not in fear. We are in a season a breakthrough. Amen. But you can't go through that door of opportunity and breakthrough with fear all around you or in you. I always give this analogy every time I preach. It's like the door of opportunity is there. But you can't go through the door like a pack mule that has all this stuff. That's why freedom is so important. Amen? And the, we are entering, you know, we just came over, come out of Passover, going into the resurrection Sunday. It's time we get resurrected in some areas, folks. Amen? There's, there's some things we've laid down because of fear. You know, I... Uh, now and then people would tell me, oh, I wouldn't want to do deliverance. You have too much warfare. I said, you know what? I'm going to have the warfare whether I do deliverance or not. I would rather be trained and overcome. <laughs> See, it, the more he attacks us, the more we pour out. When I lived in Santa Rosa Beach, Florida, when I lived down there at CI, when I was not traveling as much as I could, I became the pastor of a local rehab center to give them my time to pour back into these ladies' lives because they've been abused 
And I can minister in that area for 17 years. My late husband abused me and my oldest son really tortured, locked us up for days and tortured us. So I can minister to that. I can minister to the things they, they've walked through and are walking through. But the thing is, I don't stay in that place. I say, let me tell you what God's done. He gave me a godly husband who loves me. Good, bad, and ugly, right? <laughs> you know, he's not, you know, he just, he's awesome, Okay. So, now we are still normal. We still do fuss a little bit, okay? <laughs> so, but, you know, it's, it's that. Un- he helped me see an unconditional love that God has for me. You know, I was abused as a child, not by my parents, but I won't go into that. But I was sexually abused and then went into 17 years of horrible physical um, torture, abuse, and then lived through all that. And so, you know, you get that victimization, you know, you have to watch that. You have, the devil always says, well, God loves you so much. How come you're going through this? Because you're the one that does it, not God. I know who the enemy is and it's not God. Amen. And out of this life will come. I had cancer in 202 in my leg, and I had surgery. 203, I had, they thought I had cancer everywhere. And when they did that surgery and moved all the tumors, praise God, they were benign. But then they found a mass on my left breast. So I was laying on the operating table two weeks to the day. My husband's late wife died of breast cancer. Do you know what? You know what he told me? He said, the devil can't kill you. Amen. And that five intercessors in the pre-op room, praying, anointing, and declaring. Amen. My husband said, the nurse came out, your wife's in recovery. But it's very weird because she keeps looking around saying, I'm alive, I'm alive. Because I went in saying, the hairs on my head are numbered. So I don't go home in the day, in the day before you take me. So I would like to live though. So, okay. So when I woke up, I'm alive. I'm alive. And guess what? When they went in for that mass, they did an ult- a mammogram and an ultrasound. It definitely was there, okay? And when they went in, it was gone. So I tell you what, healing's progressive, but I sure like a miracle, and that's what I had. <laughs> Amen. So I know, I mean, as, as, as Pastor Peter said, you know, we've we saw and partaked of so many miracles. So that's why, you know, when people are diagnosed with cancer or this happens or that happens, I know what God can do. I know what God can do. And I used to ask the Lord about sharing a lot of these testimonies, you know. That's not my, I guess it is a war story. But it's not like, oh, I look, at, I've been through all this. It's not a blues song, you know. And like, nobody knows the trouble I've been through. But what it is, is a victory testimony. Because every time, every, say every time, my God's going to come through. Because he's a God of miracles. How many need a miracle here tonight? Amen. So let's go simply to Philippians 4, 5, and 7. Okay, it says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank him for his answers. If you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will keep your thoughts and your hearts quiet and at rest as you trust in Christ Jesus. Amen. I mean, we know that scripture, right? But, you know... Keeping your mind on Christ. You know, I can cast the devil out, no problem, because he's going to go, I guarantee, right? But maintaining that freedom is your place. Resist the devil and he will flee. You don't think because we get deliverance, he never comes again knocking? He always does. But we have to say the word of God says, and I do resist you. You know, the thing about praise, he runs away when we praise because it hurts his ears, you know. Amen. 
So <clears throat> fear will sabotage your destiny. That's the main thing. Not just, well, the physical part robs you of your faith. I want to say this about the healing, though. Healing, right, is awesome. And when we pray for the sick, they shall be healed, right? But healing can be progressive. So I found out a lot of times you pray for people and they don't see the immediate manifestation. You have to stay in faith and declare it will happen. Amen? But a miracle is instant, okay? All right. So tonight, you know, God really wants to break you loose. I'm going to look at my time. Loose from the fear. Um, I got a lot of scriptures on fear. I'm not going to read any more of those. Okay. I have lots. I have like 20 pages of notes, but I'm listening to the Lord. <laughs> All right. You know, you can, there's a simple fear. It's not like the fear of death, but fear of rejection. Fear like, oh, you know, I, I just am so afraid they'll reject me. So, you know, I, I, won't, I won't say what I really feel and whatever. And really? I had so much rejection because of the abuse I'd walked through. I would never be standing up here. <laughs> I always say this, I hope you like me, but it's okay if you don't. <laughs> Amen. But I can put my lipstick on without looking at myself in the mirror because of the rejection. You know, I was raised a Quaker. I was raised very, I used to say poor, but I don't use that word. Very simple. Never had anything bought from a store. To, my mom, we had pigs and cows and chickens, believe it or not. And my mom canned and sewed and cut my hair. <laughs> So I, I, you know, so I felt very inferior in school, right? Um, because, you know, everybody was the way they were. And I was in a public school, and I surely didn't dress like them. So anyways, the rejection entered. I heard it really entered. My oldest brother, who's deceased now, told me that my mom, she was 43, and my dad 50 when I was born. I was one of those surprise babies. So anyway... Uh, so my brother and sister are only married with children when I was born. So anyways, but my brother said, he goes, I remember coming home to West Virginia. And I said, Mama, you're pregnant. She goes, yes, I'm so ashamed. So what do you think it earned me? Rejection, shame in the mother's womb. You know, of course, I didn't know that until I became a deliverance minister. <laughs> so anyways, but through all that, and not only that, even though I was born in West Virginia, I was raised in Ohio, but my family was all hillbillies, so they talk like this. And they had flat tars and the house was on fire and turned the radio. Well, guess what? The teacher sent me to speech school because I did not talk like a Buckeye because <laughs> of the twang. And so more rejection, right? Being in school, there was a choir, so my mom let me belong to the choir. Well, I didn't have the clothes, and you had to wear a white blouse and uh, these, you know, certain skirts and whatever. I didn't have it. So cousins of mine that went to the school and older than me, she asked if they had a white blouse she could borrow because she didn't have time to make one. And so I remember we, there were all these stairs, and I was, like, down here at the lower class and all the way up, and my oldest cousin up there hollered down, oh, I see your mom got that blouse off of my mom because you guys couldn't even afford to buy a blouse. Do you know what that did to me? As a little girl, it's shame, shame. So I'm just saying, you know, fear of rejection, fear of not belonging. I never feared not having enough because we had everything. We had all kinds of livestock and fruit trees and gardens, so I didn't have any of that kind of thing. But the fear of not belonging, that fear of being an outsider, right? Fear of not speaking correctly. Amen. Um, so as I progressed, when I married my late husband, it was totally that country song, looking for love in all the wrong places. He's a well-to-do city boy. I couldn't wait to get off that farm. And so I think I was seven months pregnant the first time he ever hit me. And I would say that hit me so hard on my back. I was Knocked out of bed. So anyway, it began the cycle of abuse. And if you watched a Lifetime movie, I lived it, okay? <laughs> and it's like they always say the same thing. I'll never do it again. Liar. <laughs> you know, because it's demonic. It's the spirit of abuse. Amen? So 
the fear of being abused, the fear of being taken advantage of. When people have been betrayed, that's another fear. Fear of letting people get too close. So you put the wall up. You isolate. You withdraw because you're afraid they're going to take advantage of you. You're afraid they're going to betray you. You're afraid they're not going to be there for you. By the way, none of this is in my notes, so it's for somebody. I could do trauma. I was brought trauma prayer. I will do that, a little bit of it. But I really feel there's so many of you that have different types of fear that you're walking through. Amen? When I talked about the cancer, somebody in here has a family member that has cancer, so you're afraid of the death of a loved one. Amen? So there are all this. When, when we cast out fear, all fear is going to go because I'm going to call out the strong man of fear and every associated demon, and I promise you it will go. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to take you through a corporate prayer, then I'm going to have you stand up, and I'm going to break off some stuff, okay? Amen. All right. So let's do this corporate prayer. I want to do the trauma because what ha fear and trauma go hand in hand. When we go through experiences that bring fear, Okay, it comes in and it, it traumatizes our body. Here's what, uh, for me, because I was, I was raised on a dairy farm, okay, we had an electric fence that kept our cattle in, okay? So if you grab that fence, electric fence, it shocked your whole body. That's what trauma does. Trauma is when we can't emotionally process something, amen? So it traumatizes us. So let's pray this prayer. Jesus... I pray that you would supernaturally remove the hurtful memories the hurtful memories and trauma and trauma out of my mind out of my mind out of my emotion out of my emotion out of my memories out of my memories, and out of my physical body out of my physical body I ask, I ask that you would lift that you would lift all remnants all remnants of painful events of painful events and trauma and trauma that was created that was created as a result as a result of that pain of that pain. lifted out of every cell of my body lifted out of every cell of my body lifted out of every organ of my body lifted out of every organ of my body and i choose to forgive and i choose to forgive anyone anyone that has caused me pain that has caused me pain or hurt or hurt or betrayal or betrayal or even used me used me I choose to release all unforgiveness, all fear, rejection, pain, and shame. I speak now, and I declare complete healing and freedom from every painful event in my life. I pray, Jesus, that my body and my emotions would be healed. And I thank you, Lord, for healing of my hippocampus and my amygdala. In Jesus' mighty name. Okay, so I'm going to do a corporate deliverance for fear. Demons are breath associated. All right. So they come for the word pneuma, which is the same word uh, the Holy Spirit comes from, means wind or breath. So the way we do deliverance, God says we have all power, all authority. I don't let the enemy tear, rip, harm. When I call him out, he will just go quietly. Amen. Not letting him put on a show here. In Jesus' name. So I invite you, Holy Spirit. Right now, in Jesus' name. And the word discernment is the word diacrisis in the Greek. So, Father, I stir up the discernment to a higher level. Those that are here tonight, Father, they have come to be set free. The next level of freedom that you have for them. Lord, you know each and every one what they are going through, what the enemy has tried to do, Father. So I ask that you begin to show me that. In Jesus' mighty name.
And I ask you to brood over them with a fresh wind of your spirit right now as I pray. So as I call it out, just take a deep breath and blow it out. So I'm going to start with the strong man of fear. Of fear, I bind you up and I break your power. And I pull you up and out of their emotions, out of their thought process. I say, go now. All tormenting fear, go. Specifically, the fear of death. Shukarabah, fear of lack. Shukarabah, fear of getting a disease goes now. Fear of getting COVID goes now. Yep. In Jesus' name. Fear of a loved one not making it. Fear of a loved one. I hear somebody's, Shukarabah, someone, one of your, you're going to get a son. And I hear sons and daughters are in addictions. And you're, uh, the devil comes and says they're going to OD. So I bind that thing up and I break its power and I say, shut your mouth, devil, and come out now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Abuse, fear of abuse, and abuse that you've been through. All abuse, I bind you up, I break your power, and I pull you up and out. All abuse now. In Jesus' name. Uh, what I hear is some of you are abused. Some by a father, some by a mother. There was like alcoholism in the family. And the abuse, there was physical abuse, there was uh, verbal abuse, emotional abuse. And some of you, even the sexual abuse from a family member. So all the fear of abuse, I bind you up, I break your power, and I pull you up and out of the cells of their body. Go now. In Jesus' name. All the way out. Somebody in your family has dementia. And you've been having some little memory things. So the devil's been coming saying you have dementia. So fear of Alzheimer's. Fear of dementia. I break your power. And I say loose them now. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Same thing with a heart issue. A heart palpitation. A devil says you're going to have a heart attack. I bind that fear up. Go in Jesus' name, all the way out, all the way out in Jesus' name. Tormenting dreams, demonic dreams where you sleep a little bit, you have a demonic dream and you can't sleep the rest of the night. I see some of you who haven't slept through the night in a while. So right now I pull that thing up and out and I break that assignment that comes in the night season now through the dreams. Father, you said you give your beloved sleep that is sweet. So in the name of Jesus, I break that cycle. I break that assignment in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Somebody has pain in their body, and I'm going back to the cancer. And the devil says, it's cancer, it's cancer. I break that off of you now in Jesus' name. Once again, that fear of cancer goes in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You know what? While we're at it, we break off prognosis and diagnosis from doctors. You know, it's I'm not against going to the doctor, but we don't accept what they say. Okay? Amen. Because by his stripes we are healed. Amen? Amen. 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 So right now, I break off the things that have been spoken over you from the medical field that brought the fear. And some of you hear the doctor's words over and over again. So Go now in Jesus' name. Out of your thoughts, out of your memory even. In Jesus' name. It's just like the replay. It's like that show uh, the, the, where the groundhog died. kept coming back. It keeps coming back. No more in Jesus' name. The word of God says we take every thought captive. Amen. Panic attacks. Somebody here has panic attacks. I bind you up and you're real sensitive to the caffeine. It's not that. It's a panic attack. And you can, your heart almost jumps out of your chest. I bind it up. I break its power. And it is a spirit of fear. So go now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 